With each new video comes a new task to leave a new impression, some kind of knowledge to give somebody a new perspective or a new outlook to enhance their Destiny experience. Because if we all think about it, Destiny is a life away from life. For the past year and a half, me and Oryx have been out here dealing with extreme weather conditions. It's 17 degrees right now, breathing fog into a microphone, trying to make the dream. And because of you guardians, you've carried this a long ways. It's because of you that this community grows day by day. And I want to say thank you from the bottom of my Rastophilus beastly heart that I appreciate each and every one of you. The Beast Squad support, even a like on my video. Thank you so much. Now let's hop into what this video is about, which is about recovery and its charge times, but I want to make a subtopic and go into speed killing and why recovery is the most important tool you can have in this. Recovery is the added health you get over time before you finally die, or if you don't die. Hopefully you don't, but it's needed to maintain your combat momentum. What that means is you're going to keep pushing and keep taking damage while you're pushing in close on adds, and if you're getting hit with more damage than you're getting back, then over time it's just going to be too risky. It's going to force you behind cover, and in speed kill combat, you don't ever need to be behind cover because it's all about claiming kills and preparing for the unknown. Let's talk about this Ophidian Aspect build and how I have it balanced out based on the gear that I have. Speed killing is the most fun thing for me in Destiny anyways. I don't know about anybody else, but when I make a build, it's not just about an exotic. It's about putting it all together to oblige the speed at which you're trying to go at based on the activity that you're going to be doing. So with this Ophidian Aspect, I gotta get my recovery right, I gotta get my tier 8 grenade because Ophidian does nothing for recharge rates, and then 7 mobility, and the other stats don't really matter as much, but there's the perks of my armor to also help with the speed kill combat. Now let's jump into combat. I'm gonna break it down each segment at a time, exactly what I'm doing. I always talk about grenades you can jump inside of, and that's exactly what I'm doing right here. Taking that risk and knowing what my build can allow me to do. I know that I can jump in here, take this Minotaur out, and hop out and recover just in time, and have that mobility to keep going just that much quicker side to side whenever I'm charging and shooting my fusion rifle, and then hopping sideways right here just to get out of the way while I'm recovering with that 8 recovery to get me ready for these bottom adds that I know don't hit that hard, so it's not important for me to get that much health back because they're not going to hurt me that much. Now here's the unknowns that can happen. I'm going to throw my Nova Bomb. I expect it to hit the Minotaur, but it goes left. But I see an ally down. I know I can take a risk here and revive him and get an overshield. My grenade's back because of that tier 8 grenade. I throw it down, 10 sensitivity around that goblin, then fade away shot on him. And while I had that overshield, that 8 recovery, was preparing me for this next segment. I'm going to stagger the Cyclops, make my way over here. I'm at full recovery pretty much. Have an overload weapon on to stagger this champion. I put that wall between me and the Cyclops while he's over there bouncing around. I hop over here, my mobility just lets me hop and shoot that much quicker, finish him, I'm going to go to the Cyclops now, finish him off with Trackless Waste, and I'm going to leave it to you to decide in the comments why I reloaded Trackless Waste twice right here. If you can explain the situation and why I would do this, if you don't get it, I'll post the answer at a later date, but if you can get it, I will pin your comment. So play the damn game. But in speed killing, that's how fast everything goes by, and you have to make sure your build is ready for each one of those unknowns and everything that you know you can allow your build to do and get itself into. You just learn that kind of stuff over time, but over thousands and thousands of different situations over many years, recovery is just one of the most important tools, and that's why I'm showing this 5 recovery right here. I could go over here and just crap on these goblins, but I'm just showing you the recovery rate, and if I was speed killing, this is not going to keep up against hard activities. I'm going to keep getting chipped away, and it's not going to give me health back over time. And that's why I always go 7 and higher recovery, because it allows a faster paced combat because of how fast the charge comes back on my meter. It allows you to play at different paces and push just that much harder in PvE combat. But it's always about balance. Balancing your recharge with the recovery. So this is why I normally don't go 10 recovery. 9 is normally fast enough in running gun combat. 10 is almost an overkill. I'd rather have more recharge rate going on, or maybe even more mobility. 9 and 10 are practically the same, but that's the difference. Hopefully that translates right onto YouTube when I upload this, but those meters, that's how much charge difference you have by the time it fully recovers. Here's 7 versus 8 recovery, and there's something interesting about 8 recovery and 10 recovery. 8 recovery will never be faster than 9 recovery, however, 9 recovery and 7 and lower will always show the same times no matter where you're at in the red stage. And the reason that is is because when you get your shield busted, there's always a pause from the red going into the white and then the white starting to build up. But for some reason, for 8 recovery, the way that it's timed out for the meter to start building itself back up, 
the lower your health is, sometimes the faster it'll actually come back. It'll never be faster than 9 recovery, but it can vary from 7 seconds all the way to 6.7 seconds, and 9 recovery being 6.5 seconds. So you can have different charge rates with 8, and then 10 recovery can sometimes be 5.8 seconds all the way up to 6.3 seconds. And again, 9 recovery is 6.5. But like I was saying, 8 recovery is never faster than 9, but depending on where you are in the red stage of health will vary on its time. Sometimes it's faster, but it never goes slower than 7 seconds, but it can get all the way up to 6.7 seconds, and then 9 being 6.5 seconds. So a 2 millisecond difference. The only reason that I stumbled upon this was because I did two different kind of charge tests. I did one where it was all the way to the last pinch of health, building all the way to full, and I kept noticing that it was 7 seconds for 8 recovery, but then when I did this test, I did this various times, and it was coming out to like 6.7, 6.8, 6.9, and it made no sense because every other charge rate was exactly the same, whether it was at the very last pinch of health, or whether I just got my shield busted and had a lot of red health left. So depending on what exotic I'm going to be using, I'm always going to try to balance for 8 recovery unless I have no choice but to use 7. There will be occasions that I'll try to shoot for 9, but it's all going to depend on if I'm using a recharge rate exotic like Crown of Tempest or Nezrik Sin or, you know, Hollow Fire Heart or whatever that might be, you know. It's all going to depend on that and the balance of it and what I can afford, but I'm never going to drop below 7 mobility or 7 recovery on console, but I'm always going to shoot for 8 recovery. It's really important to not waste your points, and what I mean by that is don't build for something that you get a benefit out of 0.1% of the time. 8 recovery, 98% of the time is perfect. There are rare occasions 9 and 10 are good, but those are such rare occasions in the game where I'm like, thank god I was at 9 or 10 recovery, that rarely ever happens. 8 and 7 are usually perfect. I usually build for 8 in harder activities and 7 for like Gambit or something. It's really all about the balance and where I need things to be at, they're going to be of most use for me. To save time so we can jump back into some more gameplay, I tested 0 all the way to 10 and charged it from the last pinch of health all the way to the white and then white to full. So here's the charge times, 0 is 2.3 seconds slower to white and then 2.6 overall slower and then the 10 recovery at the last pinch is 6.3 and then 3.6. Here's where you can screenshot it on your phone right now to see the charge from the last pinch of health all the way to the white stage and then white to full have both of those charge times, so if you want to balance them out for your own build, those are the charge times you can expect for each tier. I used to love playing Trials and always specking people before the match because I knew if they had like a 2 recovery and I was at 9 or 10 or whatever I'd be at that time, you can pretty much charge them once you bust their shield. By the time I get full recovery, the 2 recovery is just now building from white, so in Crucible, you can just pretty much charge somebody if you know where their health recovers at. And then 7 versus 9, this is why I normally go with the 8, is because 7 is okay. I'll never go below 7. 7 is almost too slow, but it does give you about 70% health compared to 10 by the time 10 is full. And then being at 6 recovery puts you at about 50% health by the time 10 recovery is all the way full. So I like to be on the better half of full recovery instead of being at that halfway point. So 6 and lower just isn't going to be for me in speed kill especially. And then 8 versus 9, almost identical. But like I said, 8 recovery, depending on where it's at in the health stage, if it just got busted, it can actually be almost identical to 9 recovery. It'll never be faster than 9, but within 2 milliseconds at times. And then 9 versus 10, almost identical. 10 is fast. 9 is still really fast as well. So like I said, 10 is kind of a waste in my opinion. Now let's hop into my Gambit build and I'll go over it and how it's balanced based on what I actually need and what I can afford for my stats. I never build out in full Reaper set when I play Gambit because the perks I can get on other armor is better than the Reaper armor so I just use my 1.0 Reaper Bond but 7 mobility, 6 in traction, 7 recovery, tier 6 grenade. Let's hop into the build right here. So I'm using my 1.0 Nez Sin. It has Light Reactor, a recovery mod on it, so I can maintain at least that 7 recovery. I can't afford 8 because I can't masterwork this and get 2 more points out of it like I can on a 2.0 Nez Sin, but I like the Light Reactor better. And then for my arms, Discipline Mod, Enhanced Impact Induction, which I use all the time. Hive Invigoration also works on Taken, so every time I'm at a boss fight in Gambit, all these Hive mods also work. Moving on to my chest piece, it's a Reverie Dawn chest piece 2.0 because I needed it to put Taken Barrier on it. And then I have shotgun reserves because I'm using a primary shoddy and an energy fusion rifle. And then for my leg piece, Hive Repurposing also works for Taken as well. I have Traction, Fusion Rifle Scavenger, and then the stats as you see right here to balance my stats back out. But all the Hive mods work on Taken, so like I said, that's why I would rather use this gear over the Reaper gear because this is way more beneficial. And when it comes to my Bond, 
always recuperation because I'm always producing orbs and I'm always getting my health back because of that. Rocket scavenger to get three to four rockets with the fill prep rocket that I use. And to get the pinata of death, like I was saying earlier, all I gotta do is have that 1.0 bond on and then eat a synth to unlock the plus six so I can get the pinata of death so I can always have unlimited ammo pretty much whenever I'm reaping. I could probably afford to put like a minor resist on my arm piece and take the discipline mod off because I'm using Hawthorne shoddy that has demolitionist on it. I'm also using Telesto, which gives me 21 rounds in reserves because of the deep pockets. And then also the sleepless god roll, fill prep and cluster. All those weapons are agile, the armor build, the perks on it. That's the highest stats that I have available based on the armor that I have. You have to learn what is the most important stuff and balance for that. I know mobility is important. I know recovery. I wish I could have eight recovery, but that goes back to learning how to build and balance. I need everything that's on this build because all of it's going to be used, especially during the boss fight with all those taken mods, the heavy ammo I'm going to be producing, the recuperation orbs, getting my rift back for each encounter because of the hive invigoration that works against the taken, the taken repurposing, giving my grenade back every time I bust one of those taken wizard shields. So all this stuff always helps me. Here's one of hundreds of situations that happen in a gambit match. I use that recuperation, my shield's busted, and you see my health go to halfway, and then it gets busted off again. So you're always going to be touching those orbs, especially when you're spraying Telesto around, which is, in my opinion, the best reaping weapon you can use in the game to date. You won't survive situations like this, but you do have that high handling to turn and pull just that much quicker and be more accurate. The higher the handling on a weapon, the more accurate it's going to be, especially for a rocket launcher, the faster you're going to be able to pull that shot off. But like I was saying earlier, 7 recovery is really just fine in Gambit. I never really see a need to go any higher. I would like to get 8 at times, but it's really not that important to me, to be honest, in the way that I have to balance everything. There's me throwing that grenade and jumping in the middle of it. It's going to give you that much more protection because chances are you're going to stagger any enemy that's beside you while you jump in that grenade. Also do damage to them. There's that fill prep rocket again. I decided to go ahead and shoot a rocket right here. I almost threw my grenade to use taken armaments to get heavy ammo, but I already had some. But I thought it'd be more beneficial to throw it at the boss since we're behind on damage right now and we have to catch up. I'm using that fill prep and cluster to reload it and throw it off just that much quicker. I always have my ripped on this, but keep in mind, when I was doing this build, I didn't have my hive invigoration or hive repurposing on. I was testing other stats out and things like that. Here's impact induction and the Hawthorne shoddy, refilling my grenade up right when I need it so I can use the grenade to get heavy ammo. And then I have taken barrier on, which is going to let me survive this shot right here when I get hit again. And then that recovery to bounce away just that much quicker with the mobility and get me back in the fight so we can start doing DPS. The way that my recovery times out, it's 7 recovery as well. I am pretty much have my rift during every boss encounter, but if any situation were to happen, at least when I bust that taken shield, it's still going to refill it as well as my grenade. But like I said, I don't have those two perks on at the moment. I was messing with other things and I just chopped some random footage just to talk about for recovery and things like that, which, like I said, pay attention to the recovery because you can see that I'm pretty much always good and I use that dude to revive to get that overshield. Depending on if the boss was almost dead or not, sometimes I wouldn't even have taken that revive, but I did need it for the overshield at that point. But if the boss was almost going to be dead, I would have just left that guy down, but I needed to get my health back, so I saw the situation to revive to get that overshield. I know that sounds messed up to not get a revive on a teammate, but if it involves me having to waste time to revive or to go ahead and just taking out a boss, it's going to depend on that. But normally I would just go ahead and do the revive especially in a situation where we're trying to catch up and do DPS. But technically, I can get six rockets on each encounter, always have my grenade, always have my invigoration going. So this armor build basically is used to its fullest. There's nothing wasted on it. It's all balanced perfectly based on the stats that I have currently in the game. But that's it, Guardian. I just wanted to kind of go over recovery to not make it so cliche where we're just talking about charge rates versus different tiers the entire time. I kind of wanted to show you how you can balance it in a build versus what is most important in an order of importance, basically. What's used most often? Can you go with or without? What is actually being a luxury item on your build? There's tons of things, you know, that can be overkill on a build that it may not even need, but it all balances differently for each exotic that you're going to choose to use. But again, Guardians, I appreciate you all who view. This channel means a lot to me. I sit out here and spend a lot of time putting together content and testing things just to grow a beast community of players, but not just any community. I want to know each and every one of you, and I do recognize a lot of you who leave comments. If I don't comment back, it's not because I didn't want to or anything like that. It just depends, you know what I mean? But I always read them. I'm always staying active. I also have a Discord. You can chat with me directly anytime, find out any information you need to know, and I'll get back with you as soon as I can. I think it's really important to stay active with a brand or a community that anybody's creating because you are the ones growing it, not me. All I can do is make the content. I can't make you view the content. But I really, truly appreciate all the contributions you Guardians have made for the past year. 
It's not even about that, but for those of you who do leave donations, each five you contribute, I'll put that towards a month of B-Squad support. I don't have much to give back other than this content. It's not even about that. If you don't want to donate, it's fine. Enjoy the content. But you Guardians, take it easy, man. Thanks for supporting this channel, and I'll see you all in the next video next time. In space.